Hi, welcome to my channel. This is Kausal Wise and this is the continuation video of cost of capital. Already we have seen the first two different components that is cost of debt and cost of preferences. Okay, you can find the playlist link in the description box for the entire collection. Now in this video we are going to see the third component that is cost of equity shares. Under cost of equity, so far we have completed the first three models in the previous videos. Now let us see the fourth model that is realized yield method. See under this method the cost of equity capital is the IRR. IRR means internal rate of return. It is the rate at which total present value of inflow is equal to total present value of outflow. Okay. So the IRR is calculated by trial and error method. Now let us see the numerical problem for better understanding. See the problem. Mr. Wisdom purchased 10 shares in XYZ company at a cost of Rs. 10,400 on 1st January 2015. He retained the shares for 5 years and sold them on 1-1-2020. That is after completion of 5 years, he sold them on 1-1-2020 for Rs. 13,000. The dividend which he received for the last 5 years are as follows. 2015, 600 rupees dividend, 16, 17, 18, 19 they have given. Okay, with this information, they are asking you to calculate cost of equity shares. Okay, now let us see the solution. See the solution. Okay, here we are going to find out the cost of equity under realized yield method. Okay, so according to this method, the cost of equity capital is the IRR that is internal rate of return. Okay. See, it is the rate that is IRR is the rate at which the total present value of inflow is equal to total present value of outflow. Okay. So, the IRR is calculated based on the trial and error method. For that, first we need to find out the return on investment. So, what is the formula to find out return on investment? Net income that is net inflow divided by cost of investment that is a net outflow. Net inflow divided by net outflow into 100. You will be getting return on investment. So, after finding the return on investment only, we will see the calculation of present value of inflow and outflow at this particular rate in order to find out the IRR, exact IRR according to this method. Now, let us see the calculation part. See the problem. In order to find out the return on investment, first we need to find out the net income per annum. For that, just take the average dividend received. They have given dividend for 5 years. No, find out the total divided by 5. You will be getting average dividend per year. Okay. And then we need to add average profit per annum. Here, the shares sold for 13,000 and purchase price 10,400. The difference is equal to profit on sale of shares. Okay. That amount divided by 5, you will be getting profit per annum. That is average profit per annum. And then add these two figures in order to find out the net income. And then divided by initial investment. That is cost of investment. How much cost of investment? Initial investment. That is outflow 10,400. Okay. In this way, you can find out the return on investment. Now, let us see the calculation. See the calculation. In order to find out the net income, we need to find out the average dividend received. That is inflow. Total dividend divided by 5, 624. And then, we need to add average profit on sale of shares. Selling price 13,000. Purchase price 10,400. Difference 2,600 divided by 5. You will be getting average profit on sale of shares. This is the average dividend received and this is the average profit. So, both will be together called net income for the year 1144. Now, we can apply this value in the formula to find out the return on investment. The formula is net income. How much? 1144. 1144 divided by cost of investment. That is initial investment. Purchase price. How much? 
10,400 you will be getting 11 percentage so this is the return on investment so after finding the return on investment now you can calculate the total present value of inflow and total present value of outflow let us see both the values are same or not okay this is a trial and error method what is IRR at which rate the total present value of inflow is equal to total present value of outflow. Okay. Now, let's see the calculation at 11 percentage. See the calculation of a statement showing present value of cash flows. Okay. So, here the trial and error procedure to find out the IRR may be started with 11 percentage. Okay. So, we have calculated this 11 that is return on investment is 11 percentage. For that, uh, here we have year column, dividend, sale proceeds, PV factor at 11 percentage. Okay. So, there is a formula to find out PV factor. So, here we are going to apply 11 percentage now. So, this is the formula to find out the PV factor. 1 divided by 1 plus R to the power N. R refers to rate of return that is 11 percentage and N refers to number of years. We are going to find out PV factor for all the 5 years. First year, second year, third year, fourth year and fifth year. Okay. And then we are going to multiply the PV factor with dividend to find out the present value. Okay. Let's see the calculation. Okay. The first year dividend 600. No. We need to find out the PV factor. See the formula. 1 divided by 1 plus R to the power N. No. So 1 divided by 1 plus R is 11 percentage. So 11 by 100. You will be getting point. 1 1 okay to the power n for the first year 1 1 divided by you will be getting 1.11 to the power 1 what is the answer 0 0.901 so this is the pv factor for the first year okay enter here 0 0.901 in the same way for the second year same formula 1 divided by 1 plus r is 0 0.11 0 0.11 to the power 2 for the second year so 1 divided by 1.11 to the power 2 you will be getting 0 0.812 in the same way you can calculate the pv factor for all the 5 years third year 0 0.731 fourth year 0 0.659 fifth year 0 0.593 okay and the last year that is after five years uh, the shares were sold for 13,000 okay sale proceed okay for this you have to apply the same factor that is the fifth year factor can be applicable for the sale proceed okay because after five years only no the next day they are selling the shares for 13,000 same factor is applicable for this one 0.593. Now multiply the factor with the inflow to find out the present value of inflow. That is 600 into 0 0.901. You will be getting 540.60. Second year 600 into 0.812. You will be getting 487.20. Third year 467.84. Fourth year 421.76 fifth year 379.52 and sale proceed also we need to convert in order to find out the present value of inflow so these are the dividend and this one is sale proceed so everything comes under inflow right okay 13,000 into 0.593 you will be getting 7,709 okay now, find out the total present value of cash inflow. How much? 10,005.92. Okay. Then, just find out the difference between present value of inflow and present value of outflow. That is NPV, net present value. Okay. Total present value of cash outflow. Outflow means initial investment. How much initial investment? See the problem. See the problem. The initial investment that is uh, the shares purchased for 10,400. 
the initial investment that is the cash outflow is 10,400 okay so 10,400 you will be getting net present value NPV is equal to present value of inflow minus present value of outflow here we are getting minus 394.08 so here we are getting negative NPV okay so that 11 percentage is not actual IRR so we have to reduce the percentage in order to find out the exact IRR internal rate of return where the total present value of cash inflow is equal to total present value of outflow okay now let's try the same thing with the 10 percentage return okay see the calculation statement showing present value of cash flow here I have taken 10 percentage okay the PV factor is 10 percentage I have used the same formula to find out the PV factor okay so now we have calculated the total present value of cash inflow how much 10,429.20 minus total present value of cash outflow 10,400 okay so here we have got net present value 29 rupees 0 0.20 okay so at 10 percentage we have got positive value of NPV at 11 percentage we have got negative value of NPV which means here we are supposed to get equal value I told you no the present value of inflow must be equal to present value of outflow but we have got excess inflow so that the exact internal rate of return the IRR must be between 10 percentage and 11 percentage okay and we have another formula to find out the exact IRR now let's see the calculation of exact IRR with the help of the formula see this is the formula to find out the exact IRR okay the formula is lower rate we have calculated present value at 10 percentage as well as at 11 percentage no so we have to take the lower rate which one is lower 10 or 11 10 percentage no so 10 percentage plus the positive net present value so we have got negative as well as positive no so we have to take only positive NPV divided by difference in calculation of present value so we have calculated present value of inflow at two different rates no so we need to find out the difference in calculation of present value of inflow into difference in rate so what is the difference in rate we have applied 10 percentage and 11 percentage what is the difference one percentage okay so these are the elements we need to apply to find out the IRR exact internal rate of return okay see the lower rate is 10 percentage plus the positive NPV see the previous calculation see the second table in the second table only we have got positive net present value 29.20 okay so positive NPV how much 29.20 divided by difference in calculation of present value okay just find out the difference between present value at 10 percentage as well as at 11 percentage okay see the previous calculation see the first table that is at 11 percentage the present value of inflow is 10,005.92 okay and see the second table see the second table at 10 percentage the present value of cash inflow how much 10,429.20 now find out the difference between these two figures so 10,429.20 minus 10,005.92 find out the difference okay into difference in rate we have applied 10 percentage and 11 percentage the difference is 1 okay now 10 percentage plus 29.20 divided by the difference between these two values 423.28 into 1 okay is equal to 10 percentage plus uh, this will be getting 0 0.07 okay the answer is 10.07 percentage so the exact IRR is 10.07 percentage okay 
So, cost of equity is equal to IRR. That is 10.07 percentage is the cost of equity. Okay. So, this is the way to calculate cost of equity according to realized yield method. In the next video, we are going to see the fifth model to find out the cost of equity capital. Hope you like this video. Please hit the like, comment, subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you.